Brand new research in the scientific journal Nature suggests that cold exposure could be the key to curing and preventing cancer. Let me repeat that sentence again for you in a different way just to let it sink in. Nature, which is the most respected scientific journal in the world, just published a peer-reviewed article that shows a direct link between cold exposure and tumor reduction. And not only that, but the authors state that they expect that their finding will, quote, will provide a general approach for the effective treatment of various cancers. That's about as big a statement that a scientific paper can ever get away with. But it's just another way of saying that their findings don't just work for some cancers, but maybe cancer in general. In this video, I'm going to dig into exactly what this article discovered and reading between the lines a little bit, how this opens up new treatment options to people currently diagnosed with cancer and anyone looking to prevent themselves from getting it in the future. This should have been front page news in every newspaper, but strangely, I've barely seen it mentioned in the press at all. So first, if you're a little new here, let me give you some background about why you should be listening to me about these particular findings. Over the years, I've written two books about the surprising science behind how cold exposure and breath work can transform autoimmune illnesses. Check them out in the links down below, and while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. But unlike a lot of other people who write on these topics, I've always been hesitant about making claims that were bigger than what the science supported. I've been especially wary about claiming that any alternative therapies might be the key to beating cancer. Indeed, even though I was the first writer to see scientific merit in Wim Hof's method, I cringed every time that I heard about Wim Hof going on Joe Rogan or Russell Brand's shows with outlandish claims about cancer. So I took a much more cautious approach. I would say that the Wim Hof method might help add a little anti-cancer effect to your anti-cancer treatment, but that the science wasn't quite there yet. Well... As of that date, we can now say that anyone suffering from cancer should start taking cold exposure seriously. And as I'll discuss a little bit later, sugar reduction as well. And then they should talk to their doctors about adding it into their treatment plan. Because this research is unlike anything that I've seen before, I think it also stands to reason that if you just don't want to get cancer someday, take this seriously. And I'll get to the study in a minute, but I first need to give you a little cancer research history so that it all makes sense. The story begins all the way back in 1931 when Otto Henrik Warburg won the Nobel Prize for his research on how cancerous tumors use energy in fundamentally different ways than most of the body's healthy tissues. Ordinary cells use something called the citric acid cycle to generate energy in conjunction with mitochondria. Cancerous cells, however, have trouble recruiting mitochondria for their energy needs and instead use a less efficient process that involves fermenting glucose in order to sustain their out-of-control growth. This is what is known as the Warburg effect. Subsequent research showed that a full 70% of cancerous tumors have these amplified glucose genes and that they use an astounding 10 to 100 times more glucose than regular human cells. Warburg hypothesized that the effect he observed would be cancer's Achilles heel and that it would be possible to starve cancer cells by simply denying them glucose. If you want to do a deeper dive into the cellular biology of the Warburg effect, there is a great Wikipedia article on it. That is a great starting point. I'll give a link to it down there and all the other research that I talk about. It's all in the doobly-doo. Uh, go check it out. And yet, despite everyone agreeing that the Warburg effect could be a sort of silver bullet, unfortunately, no research figured out how to make use of it for 90 years. 
That's when the lead author of this Nature article, Takahiro Sethi, he's the hero of this story. Uh, he's a research specialist at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. Well, he remembered that brown adipose tissue, or brown fat, or also BAT, uses an abnormally large amount of glucose when it is active. And what is BAT, you ask? It is a thermogenic tissue located between your shoulder blades whose main job it is to heat up the body without the need for shivering. BAT turns on when you are in cold environments. Now, Seti wondered if maybe active BAT could suck up enough available glucose to effectively starve cancerous tumors into remission. So he designed a series of experiments, starting with animal models and working all the way up to humans. And I just have to say, this article is a thing of beauty in the way that it goes step by step and checks his hypothesis from multiple angles. His first set of experiments happened in transgenic mice, whose genetic makeup makes them predictably grow cancerous tumors at a ordinary and regular rate. These mice were separated into two different groups, one that lived at a constant temperature of a frigid 39 degrees Fahrenheit, which is four degrees Celsius for all of you Europeans and people who use a more rational system, and the other group that lived at a balmy 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 28 degrees Celsius. After 20 days, the researchers found that the cold mice had 80% less tumor growth than the warm ones. This is a big deal. 80% is a huge effect, but Seti was just getting started. In a subsequent study, he surgically removed the brown fat from the mice. And again, poor mice, they are the real heroes here probably. And then he ran the same uh, temperature varied experiment again. Now, again, these mice that didn't have BAT in them, uh, they couldn't suck up glucose through the pathway that he was testing. After 20 days, all of the mice in his studies had normal tumor growth. This demonstrated that brown fat was the essential component of whatever was solving the cancer problem in the first group that he studied. Finally, in a third mouse study, Seti ran the same experiment again, but put all of the mice on high sugar diets that were roughly comparable to an ordinary American diet. After 20 days, all of the mice in both groups developed cancer at the ordinary rate. In other words, while cold temperatures can really help remove sugar from the bloodstream and starve tumors in their tracks, it is entirely simple to screw up all of those benefits by not paying attention to diet. This should not be a surprise. You can't starve cancer when your entire bloodstream is drowning in sugar. Okay. So those studies were really amazing at showing the mechanisms uh, that cold therapy and brown fat use to curtail cancer. But the real test comes when you do the same sorts of interventions on humans. Since this was a small university effort, this part of the study was a little less robust than what could be puzzled out in animal trials, but they nonetheless came up with fascinating data. In the first human trial of three men and three women, Seti simply wanted to see what temperatures would turn BAT on. In other words, how cold do you have to be to have an anti-cancer effect? He put half the group in a chilly 60 degree Fahrenheit room for two to six hours a day for 14 consecutive days with everyone wearing just light clothing. The other group hung out in normal temperatures. Then he measured the amount of brown fat that was active in their bodies and compared their relative glucose uptakes with a PAET scan. Brown fat mostly exists between the shoulder blades of your back, and you tend to have more of it if you expose yourself to regularly to cold temperatures. Now you can see in these images how much more BAT there was in the cold group. See that big black splotch in their shoulder blades? That's BAT. Again, the more active BAT means your body is burning off more glucose and that tumors have less food. I've seen similar studies about BAT energy usage in the past, so his findings weren't a huge surprise, but the second human study was where the rubber really met the road. This time, the researchers put an 18-year-old man with Hodgkin's lymphoma in a not altogether freezing 71 degree Fahrenheit 
21 Celsius degree room for seven days and showed in a subsequent PET scan that the tumor stopped taking up glucose, an indication that it would shrink if they kept the study going. Later, they put the same patient in an 85 degree room, which is 29 Celsius, for four days, and that's really warm. Um, and they found that in this warm environment, BAT was no help at all. To summarize, Seti and his team showed that someone with cancer who hangs out in a constant temperature below 71 degrees and has a low sugar diet will probably have their tumors shrink measurably after just a few days. They also note that the colder a person is, the more pronounced the effect would be. The doctors end the paper stressing that these are only preclinical studies, but they are promising enough to call for much more aggressive research in the future. There are a couple big takeaways from this article that are pretty revolutionary. The most important implication, as far as I am concerned, is that absolutely everyone should cut back on their sugar intake right now. It doesn't matter if you have cancer or are merely cancer averse. If glucose feeds tumor growth, then there is no doubt that the average American diet is literally fueling the cancer epidemic. Second, is that once you slow down your sugar intake, even mild cold exposure, like going outside with one less layer on or keeping your house at a not intolerable 71 degrees is enough to have a positive impact on your cancer prospects. If you want to ramp it up a notch, it's not a bad idea to consider ice baths and cold showers too. While I absolutely think that this paper should be a call to action for anyone actively battling cancer, I think it's probably even more important for anyone who is interested in preventing cancer in the first place. After all, cold exposure and reduced sugar intake are not like fancy drugs that might have weird side effects. We know what they do. Anyone can add it to their regimen. It is not dangerous. And also, we all have cancerous cells in our body right now. And the only reason that they don't go out of control and start forming detectable tumors is that our immune system keeps them in check. Cancer only really becomes a dangerous problem once a handful of cells learns to avoid the immune system or simply overpowers it. It would stand to reason then that cutting off cancer's fuel source from the get-go would give your immune system a bit of an advantage in doing its job of keeping you alive. Now, I wanted to know more about uh, what particular protocols we might use, and I emailed the team behind the study to see what they recommended would be a smart cold protocol, but they never got back to me. However, in looking at their data, they make the case that the more active BAT a person has, the better their body will be at denying glucose to the tumors. So it would seem that more advanced cold exposure from ice baths and cold showers, outdoor workouts, the Wim Hof method, and tons of other things that I talk about on this channel will be beneficial, even if we don't quite know how beneficial just yet. Since 70% of cancers seem to respond to the Warburg effect, you can do the math at how effective you think this could be. If you're interested in going down the rabbit hole a little more on this topic, I highly suggest that you check out my video, The Wedge and the Wim Hof Method, that examines so much more of the science behind breathwork and cold exposure, as well as some techniques that you can get started using right now that use the environment to change your underlying physiology. I really appreciate you coming here to listen to this video, and I hope it has been an inspiration for you to consider taking your first cold shower. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'd love your suggestions for other topics that you'd like to see me do a deeper dive into. I will definitely have to do something more on brown adipose tissue uh, and uh, some of uh, more particular techniques, since honestly, this study flabbergasts me. It is amazing.